Hi, it's Kay here behind, uh, in front of the camera this time, Maggie behind, and this is decorating your perfect project box. Maggie's done this one with um, a 12 by 12 graphic 45 paper, which was from the Imagine Collection. Correct. Okay, because the paper is 12 by 12 and the box is bigger than 12 by 12, she's lined, the, framed it with some of our archetype, in this case grey, and then put the paper on top. Which has done a fantastic little box. It's lovely, isn't it? So I love my box, and you can get so much in it. Her bits and pieces for her projects and things. Yes. Okay, she's done that beautifully. So that's how she's done it with papers, and I've done it without using papers. And this isn't actually complete. I might do some more on here, but this is how it how it works at the moment. So <clears throat> mine is basically a plain box on the inside. And on the outside, I've decorated with de decoupage and paint and pastes, and I've done the back as well. Okay. okay. Why has the box got holes in it on the bottom? Oh, right. We've got sausage holes. Our sausage holes, or our, our, ba uh, or our um, jelly, jelly, beans. Beans. jelly beans. Okay, so they're on the bottom because when you take it off, if you've got a, 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 an 8 by 8 piece of paper in here and you want to get at it, you don't want to ruin it by picking it up. So you just put, put, put your hand through. So you just put your hand through like that, you can lift it up. Easy peasy. So you've got that for all of those. Okay, so they're, they're basically for strips of paper. Okay. So now you know. Okay, so the other thing I have done on this is, because this is a matte paint, I've run round the inside and the outside with a candle. So I'll give you that. And what I did then, I rubbed it on the hand, hand with a candle and then I heated it and then I rubbed it smooth with a cloth just to get a nice finish. And that means it just goes on and off nice and easily. And you can so. use um, a tumble dryer sheet. You can? Oh, can you? All right, okay. Yeah. Also, I prefer wax. Yeah, I do as well, but you can oh. use a tumble dryer sheet. Okay, so decorating the top um, is basically, I've already painted mine in black, but this one wasn't done in blue. So... I'll show you what I've done so far. So I'm doing this in sections. I'm not doing this in real time. I'm doing it in section by section. So I've painted front, inside, with one coat of black gesso. And I did exactly the same for the top as well. And then I decoupaged the top. So I'll show you how to do that. So do it on the bottom. So I use the paint because if you miss bits of decoupage, you miss bit, bits out, you've still got some colour coming through. It also seals the MDF for glue and what have you. So you can use um, a multi-medium gel. Um, slap it on from Indigo Blue is brilliant. I've got some decoupage stuff that I've got a tiny bit left off, but that would do. And I'm using a couple of sheets of decoupage papers. We've got a few on the website, but I don't have many. So you can use any if you like. This one's got a printer pattern on it. Um, you'll need to tear your sheets. Can you use some you paper can, napkins as well? You can use paper napkins. Yeah, you can. The same technique. You can use paper napkins. You can use. You could use old books. Tissue so, paper. Tissue paper. Yeah. You've got some nice tissue paper or anything like that. You want something that doesn't bleed the colour. That's the only thing I would suggest because you're putting it with water, so you don't want to bleed the colour. And it's, and it's basically literally you put the glue on. Stick it up, stick it on, and you just go over the entire surface. And don't worry about the edges, and the glue will dry clear. So I think this particular glue is a glossy finish, but you can get matte finishes. I think so it's deco patch, isn't it? De this is deco patch, I yeah. think, but you can, you can get various ones. But so, if I haven't got any of this, then the indigo blue slap it on is brilliant for this sort of thing. And then you just go over and cover your paper. So. This is a bit like watching paint dry, I'm afraid. So don't worry about the edges. So I'm just going to put, and you just do it at, at odd angles as well. I did originally start with one big sheet, but it does look better if you do it in little patches like yeah. this. Okay, and then you just make sure it's got sealed on the edges. I'll just do this little corner and fill this in. And then you just wait for it to dry. So simple as that. So. So we've got the edges like that, don't worry about that, that's fine. And then for my box, I just did the base and then I did the size for the top only. So that's basically it and you just cover the entire thing. So we'll just pretend that I've done that. And here's one I did earlier. <laughs> and this one is now covered 
and dry. But you can see I've missed a few little patches on here. I'm not overly worried. If I wanted to do it, I could fill those in if I wanted to, but I'm not that bothered. And I'll put patches along the sides. Again, it is a bit patchy, but again, it's all part of the effect. Okay, and then the bits, rough bits on the sides, I've done all of them except this bit here. But you can see you've got the excess here. You just literally sandpaper it off. So you just push. Okay, you see it's really important to wait until that's completely you dry do have, before yes. you do Oh yeah, it. don't do this until it, if it's damp, you're just getting a horrible mess. But what you're doing is you're just giving that nice finish or any project you're doing with MDF and you're covering with paper like this. To get a nice finish, just do this technique. It's brilliant. I love it for all sorts of things. So what you're going to do is you're going like that. So you're not coming against the way the paper stuck down. You're going towards it like that. And it sort of seals it in as well. So it just literally gives you that nice, sharp finish. Can I just zoom in when you've finished so we can show the nice finished edge? I'll bring it up to you, yeah. Yeah, that might be easier. <laughs> So, but you can see you don't you just keep doing it until it falls off and you get that it's a, it's a really nice edge if you've gone through and you've gone into the MDF don't worry about it if you just lost some of the colour because we're going to put some of that back on in a minute and is it any particular sandpaper is it a fine sandpaper or I just, it's a medium coarse one I think it's not so too it's not too no it's not you know don't you be too precious an emery about it. Board. Em, yeah emery board's perfect yeah yeah, particularly if you okay. get one from the or whatever, so you don't yeah. spend all the money on it. Okay. So, so basically, you get that finish. Can you see that all right? Towards you? Forward. Right, now tip it. Yeah, that's so really lovely. You get that nice finish there. Really smooth, isn't it? All empty of things like that. You can leave covering perfect. Lovely. Okay, like that. Okay, and now we're going to put some colour on it. Woohoo! Okay, so you can use a cardboard box or you can use what I found in, I got these from this one, Wilco. It's a, it's a portable potting up pot for the garden. So it's, it folds flat. So you can, so when you put it, when you finish with it, you can fold it flat. So you can use a cardboard box, obviously, which is free because you've probably got a cardboard box somewhere, but it does take space up and this doesn't take space up. Actually, so. it's deceptive because you can't actually see, but it's got raised sides and the sides are probably what, about 10 inches yeah, high? Yeah, the whole thing, yeah. All the way around. And it folds up. Like that. Yeah. So, and I line it with copy paper and paint, of course. You can use that for any other project as well. Mm -hmm. So, just keep, so I'll just line it with copy paper at the bottom. And put my box in. Just fits in that way better. Fits in like that. And I'm using uh, the Set Up to Ink Spray Dye. You can use this, you can other uh, dilutions. Um, I'm just thinking of us. There's loads. There's, there's loads, so there's lots of ones you can use. So I'm going to go, the last one I did was yellow and blue. So I'm going to go with a pinky colour. I'm going to go with pink and blue. So literally what you do is spray it on. So you spray it on until you're happy. Square it like that, Let's give it a bit of blue and it sort of mingles in. Ooh, I like those colours. So they look nice together, don't they? And then you can add a bit more pink. A bit but you can see where it changes as well because mm -hmm. it mixes together, so you get different colours on here. And then when you're happy with what you've got, I've got another got a little bit of black there as well. You know? Oh, it's a dark blue. There you go. A bit more deeper colour, a bit more pink. Over here. And then what I tend to do <coughs> is get a bit of kitchen towel. And then I'll tend to blot it a bit. So just a bit of kitchen towel and just blot it until I'm happy with the colour. Okay, so I'm going to take quite a lot of this colour out, mainly because it's going to take forever to dry otherwise. <laughs> and it does take quite a long time to dry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it does take a while to dry this stuff. Okay, well, it's what really we can effective. Do, so you, if you want a deeper colour you want, you just leave it and then on, on here you can either spray it on this bit, or you can just dab it with what you've got. So, I'll give it a good, quick spray, of, and then pit a bit, I'll do a bit of blue. Got to get not, not to get my fingers, and then just dab it. It's like a turquoisey blue, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, blue. A cool cat's blue. 
So, just, yeah, so basically, until you're happy with it. When you're happy with it, just leave it alone and it will just dry in its own when it's like. If you can see where it's drying, it's going to drip. So if you want the drip effect, turn it up and drip it. Okay, but I'm probably going to take this colour out because I haven't got a glue gun, um, a heat gun with me. And I want this fairly dry because I'm going to show you the next bit to get a bit more depth of colour in it. So, so we'll pretend that is dry. Move this out of the way. That's lovely. Okay, this is actually wet, but... Okay. So, to go around the edge is I'm using our thinking palette that we've got just come, come onto the website, which are brilliant. These are from Graphics and it's really useful because you get a, a whole pad and it lasts forever. And it's sheets of um, plastic and it, it is sealed both sides. So it doesn't move when you want it to. You can wipe it clean so you can use the same one for ages and ages and ages. That's why it lasts so long. So that's brilliant. So I'm you using a bit. Any medium on there, really? Can, can yeah. you to pick up? Oh, yeah, 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 anything. Yeah, yeah you can use paint. Uh, all, all your mediums on there as well. So I'm putting a little bit of um, black paint on. Now I'm using a blending tool for this bit. So. I'll just, is that acrylic paint? Huh? This is acrylic paint I'm using. So, and then I'm using. So what you can do then is you just dab around the outside. And you can see, can you see how you're getting a depth all the way around? That's really nice because it's really subtle. It's, it, and it gives it a nice blending effect yeah. all the way around. So you can do that. And then what you can also do, if you have a bit more pattern, is a stencil. So I've obviously done a Leone and not washed my stencil, as you can tell. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I like the border on this. So I'm going to put this down this side like that. I'm just going to hold it in place. Oops, I've got the ink a bit. <coughs> Let's get the paint off that bit and move that away. Okay, and then because it's a stencil and I want the pattern, get it quite dry and just sponge over. And I must admit, these blending tools are brilliant for this. You can use an ordinary sponge if you want to. You can do it, use it with a dry brush. So I tend to do a dabbing motion because you don't want it to go to blend underneath the, the the stencil. You don't want it too thick either, do you? No, you want you want it quite thin. And if you're going to come back to it and give it another coat, that's fine. You might just want to tape it slightly in place. But basically, then you get that. Now, hold on. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Come up a bit more. There you go. Yeah, that is so effective. So it's you... really really effective, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So and. and it, so easy to do and then of course then you can just darken it up go around the edge so any of the bits that you missed or you got went into the mdf you can just um, blot again so basically then then you just leave it to dry and then give it a spray of um varnish just and that's basically it so i haven't finished the whole thing but i've told you basically what i did it looks so, fab so yes yeah, so it does take a while to dry these things so i will carry on and do this I'll give it another spray and I'll leave it to dry in the, in the unit. Okay, and we'll put it on the website a bit, uh, on the um, Facebook page a bit later. Cool. Okay. All right, thank you for watching.